it's Kim with the K coming to you guys with a new video. So as you can tell with the title, today's legal tea is all about the NPRE. The NPRE is the multi-state professional responsibilities examination. <laughs> I could really get that out. So if you're interested to know about the NPRE, stay tuned to this legal tea. So I know it's been a minute since I've brought you guys a legal tea video on my YouTube. I don't know if I'm going to continue to make these videos here. I might put them on my Instagram that I've dedicated specifically to the legal tea stuff. So follow me on Instagram at legal tea by Cameron, but I may still upload here as well. I'm just trying to figure it out in transition, but I have some really exciting things going on for the legal tea and the brand that comes along with that so stay tuned but enough chit chat let's talk about the NPRE I've gotten a lot of questions about the NPRE and I'm just surprised I haven't really talked about it it kind of just happened I took it I passed and I kept moving so I will be looking down because I have some notes I just want to make sure I give you guys thorough information and then of course I'll give you my experience on taking the NPRE so like I said the NPRE is the multi-state professional responsibilities examination it's developed by the National Conference Bar Examiner so that's actually the website that you go to to register for the NPRE you go to ncbex.org which is the ncbe website so the exam is a two hour 60 question multiple choice examination so it sounds pretty easy but it can definitely get a little bit tricky with some of the questions because they say it's not the jesus answer it's the next one and that's the law so essentially it's all about ethics i call it like the ethics exam the ethics portion of the bar exam a lot of bar exams actually i think let me double check Yes, all bar exams except two U.S. jurisdictions, Wisconsin and, hello, Cameron speaking. I'm sorry, y'all, that was work. It's 4.30 on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and I just had to answer it. Um, when you're an attorney, are you off work ever? Really? Are you ever? So, yeah, moving along, I was saying that there are two U.S. jurisdictions, Wisconsin and Puerto Rico, where you are not required to take the NPRE or the ethics person of the bar exam. The rest of the states require you to do so. But fun fact, Connecticut and New Jersey allow you to just get a passing grade in your law school professional responsibilities course in lieu of taking the NPRE. So that's kind of like a benefit. My school required us to take this professional responsibilities. However, you don't have to take that before you take the NPRE. I just happened to take it before, but looking back, I could have just it wasn't on purpose. I wasn't trying to take the professional responsibilities class before um, I took the NPRE. It just was set up like that because I took it online over the summer after my first year. So then I took the NPRE right before my third year. But we'll get into that in a second. So I'm going to read this little snippet that's on the National Conference of Bar Examiners website because I think it's really interesting and beneficial. It says... The purpose of the NPRE is to measure candidates' knowledge and understanding of established standards related to the professional conduct of lawyers. The NPRE is not a test to determine an individual's personal ethic values. So, ethical values. So, I think that's important because, like I said, it's not the Jesus answer or your gut answer. It's the legal answer. So, it's usually like the second one instead of the first initial answer that you think of, which is why you should take a course. I took the Barbary course on the NPRE, which was super helpful, straightforward. I did everything that was required in the course, and I passed, and I did fine. And with my score, I'm able to go to several other states with my passing score. I didn't do exceptionally well, but I did pretty darn good. And, I mean, once you pass that, pass the bar exam, like, who cares about the little minor details in the between? So, I took the bar exam. I took, like I said, I took Barbie course. I like to stick with the same course. I took Barbie during my law school career, meaning my first, second, and third classes, I leaned on Barbie materials. Then when I took the NPRE, I used, NPRE, I used Barbie. And then for the bar exam, I used Barbie as well. I think it's important to get familiar kind of with one course throughout the whole time you're there. Now, if I would have took Barbie during the school and school year and didn't like it, then I probably wouldn't have leaned on it. But I like the way they taught it. I like the way they use different terms, different definitions of things. I just liked it. So it worked for me. But I have a lot of friends that kind of switched it up and did different things and still passed and still did well and are now and are now practicing attorneys. So do what's best for you. And so I'll be sure to leave down below a link to the National Conference of Bar Exams website so you guys can check that out. So as far as when to take the NPRE, I suggest taking it before your 3L year, so the August that it's offered. It's offered three times a year, March, August, and October, and there's different dates in there. They usually put like one or two dates in there that it's going to fall on depending on what day of the week it is. 
So I took it in August. I highly recommend doing that simply because it gives you another option to take it just in case you don't do well the first time. So if you take it in August and you don't do well that time, you still have October as well as March to try to get a score higher before you take the actual bar exam. Some people opt to take the NPRE after the bar exam. I, I don't even know how they did that. I was like mentally, physically, and emotionally drained after the bar exam. And I was so happy I had at least a little portion out the way. It gave me a little bit of a confident booster when I went into the bar exam. Because I knew at least the ethics portion was out the way. And I didn't have to worry. It was just like, just trust me, okay? Trust me on this one. If you don't trust me on anything else, <laughs> take the NPRE before you take the bar exam. Hopefully, August, you get it done, one and done, and you're through. So it costs about $135 to take the NPRE. Definitely make sure you follow along on the NCBE website so you guys can get the deadlines and the dates on that and the exact prices because you do not want to look up. And you don't even know when the NPRE is. You don't have the money for it. You didn't prepare for it. You haven't studied for it. You just don't want it to catch you off guard because you're so excited going into your third year. Or you're about to graduate and you're like, I didn't even take the ethics portion of the bar exam. But that probably won't happen. Nine times out of ten, your school is going to be talking about it, especially as you're in your third year and even your second year. Okay, so as far as the structure of the exam, like, it, like I said, it's 60 multiple choice questions. It's all online. It's not like a written Scantron. You input the numbers on your computer, submit it, and boom. It's pretty quick as far as getting the results back, but it's still a little wait. What I've noticed with the law school journey process is that they want you to wait to practice waiting because that's literally all you do. You wait for your application to get accepted in law school, and then you wait for your grades in law school, and then you wait for your NPRE, then you wait for your bar exam. Lots of waiting, okay? <laughs> but it's, of course, worth it. Um, but yeah, so there's a little bit of a wait. I think it's about two to three weeks. Don't quote me. Maybe... I don't remember it being more than a month, but it could very well be a month. But yeah, that is pretty much it about the NPRE. It's pretty straightforward. It's um, not as, I guess, scary as the bar exam or as complex as the actual bar exam, but it's definitely important and something that you have to pass. And like I said, do not just think, oh, it's going to be super easy and not study. You definitely need to study. I don't think you need to study as long as you do for the bar exam absolutely not i think max two weeks like max i think one week of studying is more than enough that's what i did and i did fine i definitely well it was more let me let me let me let me back up let me back up i attempted to study for one week i really studied for four three to four full days <laughs> but i passed um but the bar exam i studied my butt off okay so yeah that is pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed this video i feel like it was pretty straight to the point if you still have any more questions definitely comment below and let me know thank you guys for tuning into another legal tea series video i love you guys and i'll see you in my next video Later.